Hello out there, welcome to this tutorial on partial fractions. This is our second video on this topic. Check the description section of this video on our YouTube channel to get the link to the playlist containing all the videos on partial fractions. In this video, we'll be looking at non-repeated, non-linear factors at the denominator. So we have only two problems to solve in this video and we are to resolve each of the following into partial fractions. We have problem A and uh, B. So we start from A. Starting from A, um, this is linear combined with non-linear and none of the two factors repeated. So in this case, the linear one will still be treated as in the first video, and we are going to have it as a over x plus 2, then plus, since this is of degree 2, so we are just going to have a linear factor as the numerator, where we are going to have it as bx plus c over x squared plus 1. So this is how to resolve this into partial fraction. If you have it of degree 3, we are going to have it as bx squared plus cx plus d and so on. But for the purpose of this tutorial, we are not going beyond degree 2 as the nonlinear factor at the denominator. So we now make this now a single fraction. So the LCM is x plus 2 into x squared plus 1. Now x plus 2 into x squared plus 1 divided by x plus 2 will be left with x squared plus 1, where we now multiply it by a. So we now have it as a into x squared plus 1, then plus, we still take the LCM here, which is x plus 2 into x squared plus 1, divide it by x squared plus 1. So the x squared plus 1 we go, we'll be left with x plus 2. Then we'll now use it to multiply the numerator so that we'll now have it as bx plus c into x plus 2. So having done that, we'll now compare with the original fraction. Since the denominators are equal, therefore the numerator are equivalent. So we say 5x minus 1 is equivalent to a into x squared plus 1 plus bx plus c into x plus 2. Now, from here, we have two methods of resolving this to find the values of the constant a, b, and c. So um, the easier one is just by inspection, we can just look for any of the factors here. Like here now, I have x plus 2. If I equate it to 0, I have x plus 2 is equal to 0, where x is going to be negative 2. So at that point, if you pick x to be negative 2, the whole of this will be eliminated. Then we'll be left with a. So that we'll be able to find the value of a. Thereafter, we can now find another value for x that will eliminate 1. And so on, we get the values of a, b, and c. So now we put x is equal to negative 2. So putting x is negative 2. 5 times negative 2 is negative 10 minus 1 gives negative 11. And uh, this is negative 2 squared is 4 plus 1 gives 5. So we have it as 5a. We already know that this is negative 2 plus 2, which gives 0. Multiplying by this, we eliminate the whole of b and c. So we are left with only... 11 is equal to 5a when x is equal to negative 2. Now we divide both sides by 5 so that a will be negative 11 over 5. So we've gotten a. Since we've gotten a, 
we can now go ahead to eliminate one of either B or C so that even if we cannot eliminate A, since we've gotten the value of A, we just substitute to get the value of whatever is remaining after eliminating one of B or C. It is easier to eliminate B here by putting X is equal to zero, then C will still remain. Since we've gotten the value of A, we substitute to get the value of C. So we put X is equal to zero, so we now substitute 5 times 0 is 0, minus 1 gives negative 1, um, this is 0, plus 1 which gives 1 times A, we have it as uh, A, B times 0 is gone, 0 plus 2 is 2, then times C, we give us a plus 2C. This is what we now have after putting x to be equal to 0. Um, since we have a, I can just make 2c to be equal to, taking this to this side, we now have it as minus 1, then plus 11 over 5. How did we get 11 over 5? You know, this is negative 11 over 5 here. On getting to the other side it becomes plus 11 over 5 simplifying this c will be equal to 3 over 5 so please do the simplification properly you have 3 over 5 now we've gotten two of the constants a and c remaining b so we can just substitute any value of x to get B since we've already gotten the values of A and B. So we put X is equal to 1. Putting X is equal to 1 here, I have 5 minus 1, which gives a 4. And here is 1 plus 1. 2 times A gives 2A. So for X is 1, this is still going to be maintained as B plus C. Then here we have 1 plus 2, which is 3. We use it to expand this bracket, which will now give us plus 3b plus 3c. And uh, we said we've gotten the value of a and c. We substitute so that we now have 3b will be equal to, if I move this to this side, I will have 4. And uh, this is going to give us a 22 over, since it is coming to this side, it becomes plus 22 over 5 and um, this is 3c remember it is going to this side so since it's going to this side and our c is 3 over 5 times 39 over 5 going to the other side we become minus 9 over 5 so simplifying this our b is equal to 11 over 5 so if this is simplified correctly, we have 11 over 5. Now we have gotten the values of A, B, and C. We go back here to substitute in the values of A, B, and C. So substituting this, the fraction resolved into partial fraction as um, minus 11 over 5. Since the 5 is going to the denominator to join this x plus 2. So we have it as 5 into x plus 2. Then plus bx plus c. What we do is, since they have the same denominators, so their denominators now will be going down to join this x squared plus 2. So we are just interested in the numerators. So that we now have it as... 11x plus 3, then everything over 5 into x squared plus 1. Um, this is negative and this is positive. So I can rearrange them so that we have this first, then minus 11 over 5 into x plus 2. So this becomes 11x plus 3 all over 5 into x squared plus 1, then minus 
this minus 11 over 5 into x plus 2. And we have done justice to a part of this problem. We go to b part of the problem. Now for b part, I have 2x squared minus x plus 1 all over x minus 1 into x squared plus x plus 6. This is linear denominator. This is non-linear denominator. We, for the purpose of this tutorial, we just decided to combine them. To resolve this into partial fraction now, we are going to have it as the linear part, we still have a over x minus 1, then plus the non-linear part. Remember the degree here is 2. So we are going to have it as linear numerator. So that we have it as bx plus c over x squared plus x plus x. Now we look for the LCM of the denominator, which is x minus 1 into x squared plus x plus 6. So we're going to be using this LCM. So now x minus 1 into x squared plus x plus 6 divided by this, we remove this, we'll be left with x squared plus x plus 6 to be multiplied by a, and it will become a into x squared plus x plus 6. Then plus this denominator divided by this, we eliminate this, we'll be left with x minus 1, which we are going to use to multiply bx plus c, and that will give us bx plus c into x minus 1. Now, comparing this and this, you see that 2x squared minus x plus 1 is equivalent to the numerator here, which is a into x squared plus x plus 6 plus bx plus c into x minus 1. So what we do is, again, like in the a part of the problem, we pick one of the linear factor we have here, which is x minus 1. So if you equate it to 0, it will give you x is equal to 1. Now we now put x is equal to 1. So putting x is equal to 1, this will give us 1 times 2, which will give us 2 minus 1 plus 1. And the left-hand side will give us a 2. This is 1 plus 1. That's giving us 2 plus 6, 8. So we have it as 8a. This is 1 minus 1 gives 0. Multiplied by the whole of this, it is eliminated. So we are just left with 2 is equal to 8a, so that a becomes 1 over 4 since it is 2 over 8 and 2 can divide both 2 and 8. So we do that to give us a as 1 over 4 in the simplest form. Now, what we do again is assign x is equal to 0. So at that point, we'll be left with c and we have gotten a. So we now put x is equal to 0. So this is 0, 0. We are left with 1 on the left-hand side. 0, 0. This will give us 6a. So this is gone. We are left with c here. And 0 minus 1 gives minus 1. Multiplied by c will give us minus c. And uh, since I have gotten this, I can bring this to this side. So that I will have c is equal to bring this to this side. And before I do that, since this is going to be positive and this is coming as negative, let us simplify this first. 6a, and our a is 1 over 4. 1 over 4 times 6 gives 3 over 2. So we have 3 over 2, then minus 1. 3 over 2 is 1 and a half, minus 1 gives 1 over 2 as the value of c. So we've gotten C, we are left with B to be found. So we can just again put any value of X since we've gotten 2 out of 3. So we cannot put 1. I don't want to deal with negative number. So let's go straight with putting X to be equal to 2. 
So this is 4 times 2, 8 minus 2, 6 plus 1, 7. So I have 7. So here I have 4 plus 2, 6 plus 6, 12. So I have it as 12A. And uh, this is going to give us 2B plus C. And since this is going to give us 2 minus 1, which is 1 times the whole thing, we still give us this. And uh, we have, we are putting B is 2. So 2B. Um, from here, I can just bring my, leave my 2B here on one side. My 2B is still on one side. I still have my 7 on each side. Then I am multiplying 12 by 1 over 4 since... A is 1 over 4, that will give us 3. Bringing it to this side, it becomes minus 3. Then C is 1 over 2. Taking it to this side becomes minus 1 over 2. So if you simplify this, our B will be 7 over 4. And uh, we've gotten our A, B and C. We then substitute into this to have our original fraction resolved into partial fraction. So we have 2x squared minus x plus 1, everything over x minus 1 into x squared plus x plus 6 will be equal to our a is 1 over 4. So we have 1 at the numerator and the 4 will be multiplying the denominator. So we now have it as 1 over 4 into x minus 1 and uh, that's going to be plus b is 7 over 4 and c is 1 over 2. I want to make this 1 over 2 to have the same denominator as this. So I multiply both numerator and denominator by 2. That will now give me 2 over 4. So since they have common denominator, I'm only interested in their numerators. So that B, which is 7 over 4, we just go for 7x plus the numerator of C, which is 2. Then everything over their common denominator into x squared plus x plus 6. So with this, we have resolved the original fraction into partial fraction, which gives this. And this is where we are ending this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to check the description section of this video on our YouTube channel to get the link of the playlist containing all the videos on partial fractions. Please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel also. Until we come your way again, goodbye.